In this tutorial, we're going to create a simple kind of a generic game controller. And we're going to be using polygons, the extrude tool, and the edge loop tool. Now the first basic model component of this will be this piece on the left. So I'm going to go to an orthographic viewer. I'm looking at this reference I've picked. And I'll hold down the space bar. I'm going to go to create polygon primitives. And I'll grab a cube and I'll start by roughly drawing the shape across the top here. I'll return to my perspective view and I'll add some thickness to this. Now once I've got that, I'll return back to that same orthographic view. And in that orthographic view, I'm going to hit 5 on the keyboard, and I'm going to put the ghost on, which are these two little white lines, which will give me translucence uh, to my geometry, so I can now see the reference below. I'm going to click on the edge loop tool, which appears to be a little window pane with an orange line going through it. I'll just put a cut right about here and a duplicate one on the other side, pretty much like that as well. I'm trying to keep this somewhat symmetrical. I'm now going to return to my perspective view, and I'm going to add the two handle parts here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my Move tool, right-click, choose Face, select both these bottom faces, and then I'm going to return to my orthographic view, I'm going to click on the Extrude tool. The Extrude tool is a white plane with an orange cube on it, elongated. Once I've done that, I'm going to click on the little blue kind of icon here in the right-hand corner of the Extrude tool, and then I'll just drag those faces down. Now I want to flare these out to kind of mimic what we have going on here. So I'm going to start to do a little modeling. I'll right-click, I'll choose Vertex, and I'll marquee select these two, get my scale tool, and I'll move them out. And then I'll grab the inside ones and I'll scale those in a bit. And I'm going to grab these outside edges and I'll just scale them out a little bit so it's more like the reference. And I'm using my reference art here to kind of line these beziers up. I'll grab these two, and I'll scale those in. And now I'm going to go to my perspective view. Let's see what I've got. And I can see I need a little bit more work over here. Once I go to my perspective view, I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to see what I've got. So we've got this kind of roughed in. Now it's a little puffy here, so I'll go to my object mode. Hit 1 on the keyboard, R to scale, and I guess maybe I'll just flatten that out a bit. Now when they do hit 3, though, it's a little too anamorphic, a little too soft. So I'll hit 1 on the keyboard. And as I've done in this one over here, I'm going to add a couple of edge loops to hold the geometry somewhat together. So before I do, I think I'll go to my perspective view, and I want to kind of make sure that these vertices are exactly where I want them to be. There we go. So if I want to, I can do it in this view. The other graphic views are there for you to use as you feel necessary. They do make something like this a little easier. And now I've hit 3 on the keyboard and it's starting to hold together pretty nicely. Now, I want that little bit of a dip that I'm seeing, but in order to get that, I'm going to run a smooth polygon on this under the mesh window to just add some more polygons so I have some more geometry to work with. So I'll go to my object mode. I'll select my geometry, hold down the space bar. I'm going to go to mesh. And I'm going to go to the smooth, and if I go to the attributes, the default should be set for one division. And it is, so I'll hit apply. And you can see now it's giving me a little bit more to work with. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull this down a bit, just like the art here. 
or this photograph. So I'll return to my orthographic view and I'll hold down my spacebar. I'll go for vertexes here. And I think what I'll do is I'll grab the top row and I'll just move those down like that. And I'll hit three on the keyboard. So I'm starting to get a little bit more of what I want here. Now I think I might want a little bit more exaggeration here. At this point, I'm kind of doing this very subjectively. Um, it's going to be more or less a combination of a generic sort of game controller. So I'm not really going to follow the reference I've chosen very carefully, more for a design sensibility. So I'm going to grab these and I'll pull those down a little bit further. Now I'm going to add that little screen area right there. And I'm going to start by going to Edge. And I think I'll select these two edges. And I'll pull those back a bit. And I think I'll select these two as well and just pull them back. Now I'm going to grab these two faces in the front and I'm going to extrude those out a couple of times to get that boxy kind of a screen effect. I'll go to face, I'll select them, and I'll click on the extrude tool, and I'm just going to pull it out very gradually, keeping it close to the original selection. And I'll hit G or click on the extrude tool again to grab another set of faces. I'm going to hit three on the keyboard, and it's kind of round, so I'll hit one on the keyboard here. I'll go back to my object mode. I'm going to Take the edge tool and add some edges here to hold the geometry together. So I'll click there, and there, and I'll hit three on the keyboard to see what I've got so far. And now I've got that pretty much held together the way I want. And if I want to start to fashion these cylindrical shapes that appear on this uh, model. So I'm going to return to my orthographic view. And in my orthographic view, I'll hold down the space bar, I'll go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cylinder. I'll draw the footprint of what I might want right here. Returning to my perspective view, I'll introduce some thickness to this. And I'll make sure it's pretty much where I want this to be. So I'll place it down in this area. And if we take a look at the references, I've got a couple of them here just to give me a feel for what I want. You can see that these shapes are a little bit round and they're not completely flat. So in order to achieve that, I'm going to get the Edge Loop tool. And I'll click and drag very close to the edge of the top of the cylinder. I'm going to add one at the back as well to hold that together because now if I hit 3 on the keyboard to access the smooth proxy, I can see what the results will be. It might be a little exaggerated, but I kind of like that, so I'm going to leave it like that. Had I wanted to change it, though, I could go in, right-click, choose Edge, double-click on that newly assigned edge, and drag it closer to the front of the cylindrical shape. Now I'm going to move it back into the controller, and I can see that I've got something a little bit different than what's going on here, so I think I'll scale it down a bit. And then I'll return to my orthographic view, and I'll place it where I'd like that to be. And maybe I'll sink it further back down into the model itself. But I do want to keep the front of that like that. All right, so that's pretty good. So now I'm going to put the buttons on, and that's pretty simple. I've already got the shape I want to work with, that cylindrical shape. So essentially, we've got four little cylinders embedded in the larger one. I'll hit Command D and I'll get my scale tool and start to reduce that to the size of the button shape I might want. And I'll put one in position and now I'm going to go to my orthographic side view and I'll hit four on the keyboard and then have to get on top of the selection and I'll just put that where I'd like it to show up. Recess it, adjust a bit of it sticking out. Now I'm going to start to duplicate these and put them into position. And I'm doing it with my geometry. So I've got my template on a layer so that I can hide it if need be and I won't have the conflict of the reference image and 
the actual geometry. And I'm hitting Command D and just replicating these and moving them into position. Now, if I go back to my reference, the other side is comprised of these buttons that have a little bit more of a, an arrow shape, and I'm not going to really deal with that. I'm simply going to shift select these cylinders. I'll hit Command G to group it, center the pivot, and then I'll go to my orthographic view, hit Command D, and drag the replica over there. So now I've got those two kind of where I'd like them. I'll take a moment to kind of place this a little bit better, perhaps. And now I'm going to create those little control handles here. And I'm going to select a cylinder from the panel here. I'll hit Command D. And going to my orthographic view, I'll drag that to where I would like it to be, roughly. And I'll scale it to the circumference of what that piece might be. And I'll give it a little bit more length, perhaps. And if I kind of look at the reference here, it's got a little bit different design going on than what's happening here. So I'm going to go, and I'll hit one on the keyboard to go back to my regular geometry. I'm going to select face, and I'll shift select the faces on the front of this cylinder. And I'll scale it in a bit. And then I'll just pull it forward as well. Now if I wanted to go a little bit more with what was going on in this reference, this over here, you can see it kind of goes down and recesses there a bit. Again, this is more or less for design and basic use of some polygons. To get something like that, I'll click on my extrude tool. I'll center the tool using that little blue dial. I'll scale it in a bit. I'll hit G to repeat the function. And I'll drag that down on the z-axis. And I'll hit G one more time. And I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to see what I've got. And that, that's holding together pretty well. I think I want to scale this whole thing down just for a design reference because they're a little large compared to one another if I were to hide that template. It's a little big. I think I would like that smaller. Again, I'm just using the reference for a very subjective approach to this. Now I'm going to create the dial or that little handle that we would have seen if we looked at our template, this little handle here. I'm going to go to the side view where I'm looking directly to the side of that little cylindrical shape I just made. And you can see I've got this shape I've created using the CV curve tool. In order to get that I held down my spacebar and went to create curve tool, CV curve tool, and I'm setting it for one. And I'll go in and draw that little dial shape roughly where I'd like it to be. And once I have the shape I want, I'll center the pivot. Hold down D on the keyboard to locate that pivot where I'd like it to revolve from. So in this instance, it's the Z axis. I'll hold down my spacebar, go to Surfaces, Revolve, and I'm going to set it for polygons, quads and count, and I'll make it about 300. And make sure that my axis is set for Z. Now I've got my dial shape. I'm going to return to my perspective view and center the pivot and I'll start to move this into position. I'll go to my orthographic view 
and I'll place that over the geometry and I think I'll turn off my template here so I can see a little bit better what's going on F on the keyboard to zoom in and I'll place that like that at this point I might go ahead and take a look at my uh, references and that looks like that'll work pretty well now I'm not going to get into all these other details here this is just a quick basic approach for something that has a design sensibility rather than the accuracy of a particular product now once I've got those two components made I'll select them command G to group center the pivot go to my orthographic view and in my orthographic view, I'll turn off my reference here. I'll hit Command D and I'll place that on the other side. So if I went to my perspective view now, you can see we've got kind of a rough idea of what a game controller would look like. And I think I'm going to run one more level of smooth on this so that it isn't quite as puffy as it is when we use the or the proxy. I'll select it one more time, hit one on the keyboard, hold down the space bar, go to mesh, and click on the word smooth. So now it's a little bit closer, not quite as soft on the edges.